Top of the morning to you, ladies and gentlemen. This is day five of this year's Industry Samurai Awards and Conference. And we have a, a very, very exciting talk today and uh, an industry expert who is a celebrated speaker, a sector expert, and a best-selling author with us today. Before I have the privilege of introducing him to you, let me give you a quick backgrounder of the topic that we're going to discuss. The topic is India's startup ecosystem beyond services. Now, startup is one of the most talked about subjects in India and, and the millennials. And I, I believe that there are a lot of people, young people who uh, are watching this on our three platforms where it is being live streamed. A lot of young people who are millennials or, or also called Generation Z, they cannot imagine how life was uh, before the advent of these startups, especially in areas like public transport, and uh, and retail online sales so when uh, old people like me you know reminisce how good it was to go to retail outlets and the whole family would be so happy everybody is going to retail outlets so we would walk 5 miles or 5 kilometers to go to a place do not believe us it was not a great joy it was very painful so the life has really transformed now in the last two decades with startups like ola like flipkart it, the amount of time it saves the amount of money resources it saves is unimaginable and this is all thanks to the startup ecosystem. So this is the background there for the topic. And we have the country's foremost expert. And it will not be an exaggeration and overestimation if I call him the world's one of the world's leading experts. And you will shortly know why. Let me introduce his uh, background to you. We have uh, with us uh, Dr. Nikhil Agrawal. He is uh, the CEO, the chief executive officer of the Foundation for Innovation in Science and Technology, Indian Institute of Technology, Kanpur, and the author of the much talked about book, The Startup Success Master Plan. The book is a top ranking book in business and entrepreneurship books on Amazon and other places. We are sharing the links here. I have shared the link, the chat section, and we are also sharing the link in on YouTube and other places for you to go and see the book. And, and buy it. It's a, an amazing book. I've read it from cover to cover. It has so many insights. Let me introduce his uh, background to you. Uh, Dr. Agrawal has guided hundreds of entrepreneurs during his career, spanning over two decades, helping them raise millions of dollars in funding and scale up. He wears many hats. Currently, he's the CEO of IIT Kanpur Startup Incubator, the Center for Cybersecurity and the Center for Artificial Intelligence. He was nominated as the Senior Senator of the World Business Angel Investment Forum, or WBAF. Dr. Agarwal entered his, uh, sorry, earned his MPhil in technology policy from the University of Cambridge and a PhD in science technology and innovation studies from the University of Edinburgh. We have the privilege of having Mr. Agarwal on the panel of our awards jury as well. And a very warm welcome to you, Dr. Agarwal, to the forum. So my first question to you is something that many people in the audience want to talk to you about, is that one line that you wrote in your book, which stays with me, is that many people believe that entrepreneurs are born, not made, don't believe it. Why people shouldn't believe in this dictum? So first of all, let me tell you, Anand, you said you are an old man, but I would put it in a different way. You are a young man with a little bit more experience than younger people. Uh, so uh, there is nothing old or new in entrepreneurship field. Uh, the entrepreneurs, there are only two types of entrepreneurs, one who do it and other who plans it. Uh, same way, entrepreneurs are not born. Uh, you can be born as a cricketer's son. You can be born as an actor's daughter. You can be born from the entrepreneurship family. And we have seen in the last almost 100 years, how many business family have survived because their second generation is not able to take it forward, despite of the fact that they had a uh, more playing ground or they were not having equal opportunity, they were having better opportunity. So people like who you have started speaking about, Zomato's of the world, Ola's of the world, uh, Oyo's of the world, Lenscart yesterday raised uh, $300 million dollars. These people, like we know them, we know them, we have, they are our friends. They were all for coming from the middle class and now they are multi billionaires. Uh, Nikhil Kamath of Zerodha, he earned five crore rupees a salary every month. So he comes from middle class. Ritesh Agrawal, I know him quite well, in fact, and he was uh, uh, coming from a lower middle class family. Now he's one of the richest men. Uh, Piyush Bansal, Kunal Shah, 
uh, Sachin Mansal, uh, you name it, start naming these people, they does not come with a entrepreneur background. Uh, and they started their businesses less than 15 years of time. I remember a quote from Chetan Bhagat. Chetan Bhagat said in 2007, when I, he wrote one of his first books, uh, bestseller, and he was in Delhi, in a Delhi book fair. So two boys come to him. They said that we have started an online um, book selling platform. Would you like to sell your book? So he said, oh yeah, I'm already tied up with here and there. And they said the book selling platform is called Flipkart. And these boys are Sachin Bansal and Vinny Bansal. Now certainly, uh, like Amazon, Flipkart sells everything. It's just 15 years time. Chetan Bhagat is still a best-selling author. You are editor. I am a CEO. But Sachin Bansal and Vinny Bansal have started many businesses. They have not just started a business. They sold their business for $16 billion, an online company to Walmart. And now they have started new business, which has again become a, a unicorn itself. So some phenomenal work these people have done in the last 15 years time. So entrepreneurs are made and can only be made by hard work, dedication, focused approach, and uh, willing to do something. Uh, you are not born entrepreneur. You are only born as a human being. You have to make yourself an entrepreneur. Thanks. Thanks so much, Dr. Nikhil. This And for such fascinating stories and insights about the entrepreneurs who have come up in the last 10 years or so. Now the thought behind the, the, the belief, which is a very deep-seated belief in India, as you know, uh, that entrepreneurs are born and not made is that one needs to have a business background to do well in business. And this is a very peculiar point that comes up in discussions. And even during interviews at management colleges, when, when youngsters say that, no, we, I want to become an entrepreneur, then they are asked, uh, even by their colleagues or friends, that you do not have a business background. How can you be a success in, uh, in business? Has that mindset changed in the last few years and how? I'll give you an, I'll give you an answer with a story. In 2010, there was a young man who was looking for some small amount of money. Uh, and he recently graduated from IIT Delhi. Uh, he reached out to two gentlemen called Sora Shrivastam and Sanjeev Bikchandani. Incidentally, both are now Padmashri and Padmushans, one of the most best, better known entrepreneurs of our time. Uh, and he said, I need four crore rupees to start a business which will deliver food. And he has done it for 100 people, others, and everybody has laughed at him. He said, why you need to deliver a food? Why somebody will pay you for to deliver a food? So he said, no, there is a company which I want to invest. Sanjeev Pichandani and Saurav Shirovastak took uh, courageous decision and invested 4.47 crores, $1 million at that time in 2010. 10 years after, the story goes faster. The company is now known as Zomato. It has gone several times belly up. And 10 years time, when the company got listed, uh, the company got listed for 1 lakh crore. And Sanjeev Ikchandani invested a million dollars for 15% equity. His equity was 15,000 crores or 4.47 crores he has put in. So you have to, the essence of the story is that you may be rejected by 100 of them. But trust me, 101th person, you have to find one Sanjeev Ikchandani and one Saurav Shrivastav who will trust you, who will put money in you. And that person will uh, be your philosopher, guide and friend for next many years to come. And then same thing you can repeat for others. So uh, uh, most of the time, entrepreneurs are laughed upon. Another story I can tell you from my own uh, entrepreneur, one of the entrepreneurs who is incubated here, uh, he was about to get married. 24-year-old guy coming from Nagpur, he was about to get married. And the girl was working in Microsoft. And suddenly he left his job and started his company building robots. They are doing outstandingly well, in my opinion. But then the girl father got to know. He said, Beta, come over to a house. He said, Why you left your job? He said, I want to become an entrepreneur. And that was the end of the conversation and end of this marriage. So by the time he got out, he knew that he the girl will not get married to me. The father will not approve. And he has done a determination that once, once I go back, I'll show him that this is what it is. So it's not a story of any Bollywood, Hollywood. It is happening in front of us. Uh, there are there are fathers and girls which are still not supporting, but there are enough people who believe in entrepreneurship. In fact, I can tell you my own story. In in 2003, when I got married, and uh, my I was having a stipend at that time only for 10,000 rupees, but my father-in-law probably invested in my future, and uh, and of course the uh, my wife is also 
pretty accomplished professional she is she is one of the top risk professional teaching in a, in mdi gurgaon uh, but at that time when uh, i got married i was just a student earning a stipend uh, for my phd and uh, an accomplished family decided that okay this boy can do something in life so you have to find one person and one person you will get married maybe for your life maybe for your entrepreneurship journey but trust me there is that person exist you have to find that person you may have to do 100 calls but that's fine that part of the life because finding that right person is very important that is that is a brilliant insight dr nikhil because find that one person who believes in you it could be it could be your father it could be the brother it could be your wife it could be your father in law such as you know the way you you shared with with our readers absolutely the first person who believes in you and then you have people who come to believe in your story now there are uh, and but it is also a fact it is also true that uh, when one business becomes successful there are a score of others there are many others who go unsung who are struggling who are not doing well they end up losing their job these are the stories that people usually don't talk about but they are also a reality uh, and and obviously the the whole story of guts and glory and uh, is being talked about is being celebrated which is all very well but then you also have to stick it out so now uh, my second my next question to you dr nikhil is what are the biggest things to look out for what are the biggest obstacles in a startup journey that you have seen in your experience biggest challenges in india particularly so the first challenge of course uh... everybody says a gut is as important and you know the willingness and the passion that is fine the biggest challenge in india particularly is finding money because even you are extremely passionate you are talented uh, you are um, having an a great idea but you need to find like a dipendra goel found out sanjeev bikchandani to put in the money you have to find that person who trust in you and who put in the money and that's why uh, number of incubators like uh, uh, iit kanpur comes in where we we are custodian of the government money in fact i must congratulate uh, in the last 5 year, 4 years the government has done more than any other government in the world would have done and i am telling you my independent academic uh, is not just to uh, please the government or say something but it's my neutral uh, opinion uh, our government has done exceptionally well uh, if you are a hard working startup you have a great idea if you have a command over technology today you can raise up to a crore or two from the government grants uh, quite easily without even di- diluting your equity so it is entirely possible uh, and you can get right kind of mentorship there are institutions like us and many others who are willing to support there are people who are willing to go forward they are playing i know i have uh, now 50 mentors uh, with working with us and many of them are working pro bono they want to give back to the society they want to work with entrepreneurs because they have made their money they said okay can i before i retire completely or before i die can i help two more entrepreneurs to come up with so entrepreneurship is just not a wealth creation but entrepreneurship is also looking at a creating a social justice because you know as an entrepreneur today if you are starting a business you are not just starting a business but you are starting a great responsibility you are starting uh, first of all the responsibility towards the nation that you have to pay your taxes you have to pay your gst you have to build up something you have to employ people today uh, i have couple of businesses where are uh, people are employed so my main worry is not about like how much money i would make my main worry every month is that how should i pay these people how should i keep on running their families the christmas is coming new year is coming what kind of gift i have to give it to uh, my employees that's my main worry it's not about like which uh, expensive car that you will buy next year that's not the worry it's all about that whether uh, the the winters are coming whether the proper adequate clothes are there for my employee or not so it, entrepreneurship also come with a great responsibility and there are examples like tatas is a great example birlas is a great example and if you look at like initially i have given example of 15 year old story of ritesh agarwal bani bansal you know the new entrepreneurs but even if you take a step back and if you see our old age entrepreneurs like jrd tata uh, like uh, aditya birla uh, like even ambani uh, so if you look at like 
I'm sure between us, we will know people like who are working these companies for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, they have retired from their company, the, uh, these companies. So there are thousands of people who are working. They've built their life. They are, uh, their kids got married. Their kids got education. They have built up their houses just by working in these companies. So somebody must have thought like Dhirumbai Imani must have thought, JRD must have thought that, okay, we have to set up a business and we have to set up this business in perpetuity. So that comes, there comes extremely great responsibility. So entrepreneurship is not just about the creating wealth. It's also about the creating social justice. So we should, and my honest advice to the entrepreneurs who are starting is that don't think about exits. Think about creating value for yourself, for your company, for your customers, for your shareholders and say, okay, till the time I'm retired, I have to run this business. That's how the success will come. If you, a lot of, lot of people come like, why you are starting this business? You say, I want to make an exit. I want to create, make a two, $3 million and then I will relax. I will go to Italy and I will relax. That's an absolutely absurd, I would say, answer. You may be brilliant, but the brilliance does not mean that you are responsible. As an investor, I'm talking about, I'm also an angel investor. Uh, I look for responsible entrepreneurs than the brilliant entrepreneurs. Responsible entrepreneurs are responsible towards their own businesses. They are, uh, they are, they are more trustworthy. They are more loyal. They are more diligent and they have a great resilience. Uh, brilliant entrepreneurs, like you may be a crazy guy, but that's fine. You can become, you may not be capable of becoming an entrepreneur. You can become a good employee. You can become a good sport. You can become a consultant. You can become a resource person. You can do whatever you want. But if you are not responsible, I would say entrepreneurship is not a field for you. Wow, that's such a great point, Dr. Nikhil, about it being a great responsibility. And that also partly answers the question as to why should an entrepreneur stick it out when the going gets tough? Because it's a great, great responsibility, much more than the success of the business. So that's a great insight, sir. Now, concerning that, in relation to that, I come across many experiences, many stories from people I interview, especially in the manufacturing sector, that they start with a great thought, especially those who are not from uh, a generational background, who have not seen their, uh, their parents toil and then get success, people who are starting out for the first time. Um, so they get discouraged a lot. Uh, for example, and not because their idea is not picking up traction uh, from the ecosystem. They see that there is a trust deficit. They are being uh, made to run from pillar to post by, let's say, large corporates uh, for a number of reasons. They face a lot of rejection and then they get discouraged. Now, my question to you, sir, is that, you know, is, is a startup a function of the ecosystem also? The reason is that there are a lot of examples we get from Europe and the U.S., of Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos. But when it comes to India, there are examples, but there are few and far between in relation to the large country that we have. So my question to you, Dr. Nikhil is, is a startup a function of the ecosystem? And if so, what are the things, factors, growth factors peculiar to the Indian ecosystem for the startup growth? Very good question, Anand. So my, uh, I'll, I'll go with the same, our family ecosystem. So startup still not encouraged in families. Imagine that you are a young graduate and you come out of the college and you get a job of 5 lakh, 10 lakh, 15 lakhs, or even IITNs nowadays getting in 50 lakh job. So you go to your father that I don't want to take a job. I want to go and work. Uh, I want to start my own business. I may start saving some success in two, three years time. Most of the parents does not support entrepreneurs even today. That's the reason in the, that partially answer of one of the first question is when you go to a business school or somewhere, they ask you, do you have a business background? Because chances of business family supporting a business uh, person, a business cycle is much superior than a service family supporting an entrepreneur. And that's a mindset because opportunities are ample. I remember when we were growing up, I'm sure uh, uh, you will also recall that the option of choosing a career was not there for us. From day one, uh, when you are born, you are branded as that he's this guy will become an engineer. This guy will become a chartered accountant. 
So now how the situation has changed. Another very interesting insight, when I was born, my father uh, was quite concerned and he booked a cylinder for me. Gas yeah, cylinder, you know, earlier times. And he said, when my son will go to uh, college and after that he will join the job, it, it was almost 15 years waiting period that time. Uh, the gas cylinder will come and he will have a good life. Like at least he will have a cylinder. At the same time, he booked up a scooter for me because scooter waiting period was almost similar, 15 years. When I finally went to Nagpur for my first job, I was uh, uh, a professor in I, uh, IMT Nagpur that time. And it took me like 10 minutes to take up a cylinder. I, of course, I have not used the credits my father has kept in for 20 years for for waiting the cylinder to come, but I it took him only five minutes. I went to the uh, gas agency and took it. So situation has changed. That mindset has to change among the society also. The acceptability of startup, because first is you have the support has to come from friend family. Uh, then the second step has to be like about the ecosystem that is supporting. And I absolutely uh, like the way that you put in that it is a function of the ecosystem. The reason is like people say that, can we replicate Silicon Valley? I said, Silicon Valley is not a geography. It is not a technology hub. Now, a lot of people come even to IIT say, we want to see your on uh, startup center. I say, you're welcome to come. And when they come, they are little disappointed. The reason is there is a chair, there are tables, there are people. What do you want to see? You know? So I want to see your office. It's a nice office, of course, but what do you want to see? So same way in Silicon Valley, when you go and say, okay, I want to see a Google HQ. I want to see a Facebook HQ. I want to go and uh, visit Stanford, or I want to see the ecosystem. You just see people. You go to, I have been to Google HQ, Facebook HQ. You see people who are working on a floor and they are working on laptop. What do you want to see out of it? There's nothing to see. There's nothing to experience. You go to a NASA space station, at least there is something to experiment. You got it. So what, what is, what is you're not able to see is the culture. Now, if you, there is a around Stanford area where the whole, the, which is called Makkah of entrepreneurship in the world. So if you go to, I'll tell you what the culture means. Like if you go to a coffee shop, most likely there will be a lot of people sitting, they will be working on laptop, they are chatting. And you approach an absolutely unknown person. Hey, hey, Bob, I have seen you somewhere. Uh, and I know that you are very good in artificial intelligence. Uh, can I pop in some time to have a chat with you for AI? And he will ask you, hey, hey, Mike, what you're doing and you know what not. So a couple of seconds. And most likely the Bob will say to Mike that, okay, come over. I'll help you. That mindset of helping each other uh, that's something if you do exactly the same in New York, that will not happen. If you do same thing in London, that may not happen. That definitely in New Delhi, that will not happen. People don't talk to each other. In Silicon Valley, that happens. Silicon Valley, you can bump into anybody. You can have a conversation with that person. And if you ask for a help, the person will help you out. Go, going out of it, they, not, they will not look at that. What's in it for me? What's my benefit? That culture we have to imbibe. So what we develop here in our uh, ecosystem is that uh, I know something that can be shared. So my competition is not with the person who is sitting next to me. My competition is with the whole world. That ecosystem we develop, the culture we develop of helping each other, supporting each other, starting a business each other. Now, why, uh, why there should not be a competition? And also it's about the opportunity. Let me give you economic answer to relate it to it. Now, if you look at the Indian economy, people say India is growing more. But trust me, in our lifetime, and I, I will be very candid here. I know a lot of people will troll me on this. In our lifetime, in terms of GDP, we will not be able to touch US and China. That is for sure. At least you and me will be extremely old by the time we will be able to touch because they, were, they are also growing. So China GDP is more than $20 trillion. US GDP is to $20 trillion. We are $3 trillion. We have to multiply almost seven times to reach there and assume that they are not growing anymore. Even if they are growing by half of the growth, what we have like 3% or 4%, 
by the time we will reach 20 trillion dollars, they will be 40 trillion dollars. So the size, the growth, the growth is there, the growth, high growth is there. But at the same time, the competition is with other countries. In the beginning of our conversation, we spoke about uh, Korea and uh, Japan. Like the things that you see in our neighboring country, which are not far, which are absolutely phenomenal. The culture that they have developed. Uh, go and talk to anybody, they will help you out. Go and talk to. So this helping and helping out each other is, is I would say, is becoming a national priority. We should do that. Uh, and it happens in certain communities in India. Like uh, it's quite intringent in a business community, Jain community, you know. So if there is a person from Jain community, he's starting a business, other people help out. Same thing should happen, not only in religious community, but as a national uh, priority for us, that we should be able to help each other. We should create an ecosystem. I know something about technology. I should be able to share with someone. I know about something about creating a business plan. I can share with someone. I know something about uh, writing a proposal I can share with someone because when you share, start sharing things, you're also promoting your own business. You can collaborate with each other. You can, you can compete around the world. So our competition is not within the country. Our competition is across the world because these countries are also growing. Uh, and if we don't work hard, if we don't work fast, uh, these countries will become $40 trillion and we'll be still talking about $5 trillion, $10 trillion, $15 trillion economy. So our scope is high. Uh, there is an opportunity. Government is extremely proactive. And I have seen government, I'll not name them, but I have seen many Lagarde states, which were called so-called Bimaru states. And these, they are like going out. They are the, the IS officers, politicians, uh, the people who are associated, they're working from 9 to 11. So there is, there is an activity which is going on. Uh, now it's your ability to encash that activity and make your mark. So creating an ecosystem is very important. That's so true. So true, Dr. Nikhil. And before we go into the brass tacks of it, the reality on the ground in terms of a startup, an entrepreneur's journey, a startup founder's journey, how it begins, what are the different stages? One, just one related question about this. Is this trust deficit? There's been... A lot of brain drain in the past, people talk about it. It's a little less, uh, as you said, that India is now becoming a land of opportunity and people are choosing to stay back. And with champions such as yourself, Dr. Nikhil, I must tell you why this is so important to have advocates, champions of the startup culture such as yourself because of this trust deficit, because of uh, we need people such as yourself to tell people that this collaborate with each other give value, reciprocate, you know, in the way that people in Silicon Valley do. So that's such an important role that you're playing. One question that about this is that the brain drain that has happened in the past. Now people, if people, let's say a person who's at your esteemed institute, there are so many people who want to work in India, but then they have to go abroad because of, they see that India is, does not uh, give you the opportunities. What do you say about the potential of the Indian market, the ecosystem, for startup founders who are looking to set up base in India? So not only I'll give you uh, another example. I was, last year I was speaking to a professor Maninda Agrawal. So professor Maninda Agrawal is 2012 uh, Padma Shri, one of the most important computer scientists that we have in the country. Uh, he is leading the cybersecurity initiative at IIT Kanpur. Incidentally, professor Agrawal has a very interesting background. He's B.Tech, M.Tech, Ph.D. from IIT Kanpur, and he was offered jobs in many of the Ivy League because he is a top mathematician. He was the architect of the Sutra model that we saw during the COVID time. Uh, so I was at his home. I was speaking to him. I said, sir, when you graduate from IIT Kanpur, uh, what is the situation then and what is the situation now? So he gave an interesting insight and that was surprising for me. He said, when I graduated, 250 students were graduating. Around 200 of them went abroad. Uh, 20 of them have joined jobs in India. 15 of them become IS officer and one or two of like me who become professor. <clears throat> so we had uh, IIT Kanpur has a lot of uh, secretaries and IS officer during that time in the government. I asked him, sir, what is the situation now? He said, this year now we are graduating almost 850 students from 250 to 850. And you'll be surprised and proud to know 
almost 750 to 800 people decide to stay back. Even if they're in their jobs offers abroad, they don't take the job offer abroad. They decide to stay back. So that is, that is also supported by another fact. Like there is a young student who called me from graduate from Delhi College of engineering and his father, uh, I know him well. So, and he said, sir, I got a job in Google and, uh, I got, uh, three locations. I got Copenhagen, I got Hyderabad and I could got gone. Where should I join? Immediately in, with my own wiseness, I said, no, oh, join Copenhagen. It's a great, you a young boy, you a young man, you will enjoy good party. Go, go and see Aurora lights. And you can see the Scandinavia visit Europe. Few years you spent there in Europe and then you come back. Uh, this is our Copenhagen. Uh, it's too far. The food may not be there. My friends are there, uh, which uh, now he's, he's joining Google, you know. Uh, uh, what do you suggest about Hyderabad and Gurugaon? Then I said, join Gurugaon because you will be near to your father. Your father will be happy. Saturday, Sunday, you can come. Uh, it's quite nice. But then finally, I got to know that he joined a job in Gurugaon, uh, in Hyderabad, and I called him. He said, what happened? He said, sir, Copenhagen, you know, uh, the food was not my liking. And I can always go abroad whenever I want, but I want to stay in India because my, all my friends are there. Everything, whatever you get in Europe is not nowadays available. And the learning what I have today in technology front uh, in Google Hyderabad, it's superior than anywhere in the world. And that has really given me a great insight that people, despite of having an opportunity, they don't want to go abroad. Me and my family, uh, both me and my wife are uh, uh, graduate from top 15 universities of the world. Uh, we have an option like there is a nowadays there's an immigration option that you send your if you are a Ivy League university graduate you send your uh, certificates and Canada Australia UK they give you immigration on a priority basis and after living abroad for five years we decided to come back because we said that living in India is much more better uh, because it's not about like you know only the money that you make it's about the life that you live, a quality of life. I can understand I'm in Delhi, there is a pollution, there are bumpy roads, but that's also living a life experience. Living a life is not about like living in a resort, living a life the way you want it, the, the environment around you. There is, there is poor people you can help. There is uh, uh, cleanliness is not there that you can find an opportunity in cleanliness. Like we have now, more than 20 companies which are working on waste to wealth. So somebody see a garbage, they say this, we see a garbage, we become happy because we see power. We see, we see a uh, new kind of uh, goods, which is coming in one of the, of one of our own IIT company called pool. Uh, the whole company got incubated on a simple premise that we should not dump temple flowers into Ganga. Four years back, Ankit Agarwal was sitting in Bitur uh, uh, Ghats and he saw that trucks and trucks of temple flowers come and they poured them into Ganga, creating a, a pollution. He said, morning these flowers were there on, on Bhagavan and evening we throw them like they are garbage. What will happen to them? And he came with an idea that can I create an Agarbatti, incense sticks out of temple flowers. And rest is history. It is one of the most preferred brand today. Alia Bhatt has recently invested in this company. Now, not only that, he has able to create leather wallets out of the flower waste. So the wallet, what he is creating is, is leather is similar to what is a leather, what you get normally as a butchered leather. Now, this leather is made from flower waste. It's completely vegan, completely organic leather. And it's called leather. Now, not only is able to create leather wallets, he is able to do a tie-up with uh, uh, this uh, Tommy Hilfiger brand. Now, next time you go to New York, next time you visit the Tommy Hilfiger brand, you will find uh, leather wallets in New York made from a company called Carnival Flowers Limited. But they will not be the leather from the butchered leather. They will be made of temple flowers which you offer in Kanpur in the morning to Bhagawan. Now that's a change. So somebody see a garbage, we see opportunity. Somebody see 
India as a poor place, we see opportunity. That's a mind. Uh, that's a mindset of entrepreneurs. C.K. Pralad wrote a book called uh, 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 Opportunity. Elephant. Something. No, no. Something support, uh, wealth at the business bottom of the pyramid. That. Oh, yeah. 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 So it was a quite a seminal book uh, in 2005 or six. He wrote that book. The another book by my colleague J.D. Prabhu from Cambridge. He wrote a book called Jogad Innovation. The the fundamental of our Jogad actually been adopted word over today. The concept that Sundar Pichai, Parag Agrawal, uh, Arvind Krishnan, or uh, uh, Satya Nadella has learned as an undergrad student, school student, they are now implementing and running the largest companies in the world. So something is going right in this country that we have to just believe ourselves. Okay, now the time has come for us. Something is happening, right? It probably like So our time was not there. Our time was there in Son Chiraya time. Now we identified, okay, this is how we have to build up Son Chiraya. We have started building up. In next few years time, you will see that India uh, Son Chiraya movement will again come. Amazing. Amazing insights, uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm again sharing the link to Dr. Nickel's book, The Startup Success Master Plan. Please check it out. Please buy it. It has, it has more such stories and insights about startup ecosystem in India. Uh, I've just shared the link. Please go and check it out. And absolutely, Dr. Nikhil, uh, the biggest example to my mind of the Jugard philosophy that nowadays a lot of us in the media also who have been uh, deriding it uh, in the past, yeah, what is Jugard and you just make do with things. But now we're coming to understand the philosophy behind it. Biggest example to me is uh, Elon Musk uh, making the rockets reusable. So he saw that, you know, the rockets go to waste. Why, why to put them <laughs> to waste? Just make them uh, capable of, you know, uh, of of landing landing back in a in a reusable condition. That is the biggest example of Jugard ever. That we used to see that why to throw such things away? You know, let's just make use of them again. So that's great, great. And now we we come, ladies and gentlemen, to the act two of this inter this amazing insight uh, insightful interview. We still have about uh, wow, we are almost close to the time. This is such an interesting conversation, Doctor Nikhil. Uh, an important thing that I wanted to talk to you about. I know we are short in time, but an entrepreneur's journey. Uh, a lot of people want to know about when you have an idea. Let's say it's a good idea. Uh, and you go to the VC, you look for an early stage investor or the seed investor, then series A, B, C, and all these things. So can you share with us a typical entrepreneur's journey that we have in startups? Okay, so let, I'll give you a scientific answer to this. Uh, so let's say I have an idea and I am looking for a small amount of funding to create something what we call MVP, minimum viable product. Normally, the first round of funding will never come from VC until unless you have a proven record. So you have to find money either from your own pocket or what we call 3F funding. 3F funding is friend, family, and fools. So initially, your father will put in the money, your friends will put in, or some fool will put in the money in you because you have nothing on your hand. Uh, but 3F funding is the most risky funding, and it happens. Uh, once you are able to create an MVP, uh, that, okay, this is how my idea will look like. This is how the structure will be. You are a little bit more confident. Then you can go to a pre-series, uh, pre-seed pre stage, something which we call angel stage. You can find individuals who are HNIs. And nowadays there are a number of uh, uh, angel groups that also exist like Indian Angel Network, Mumbai Angel Network, Ivy League Ventures, FAD, uh, Let's Venture, Angel Bay. Uh, there are a number of angel networks that exist, which accepts your application. And small amount of money is being put in by these angels to create a larger syndicate. The funding can range anything between 50 lakh rupees or 25 lakh rupees to even two to three crores. You can get that money. That, come, that, that will help you in launching your MVP to a product stage. Once you have reached to the product stage, then you can go for a seed round. Now seed round is next to angel round. In seed round, the money is like you have already started uh, testing your product with certain customers. There's an interest one of customers. You may have a small amount of revenue coming in. I have created something another willing to pay, right? It's like a, writing a book. So I wrote a book. 
you like it you you are willing to pay for the book so that's my MV, uh, uh, mvp uh, but can we create a large scale sale i don't know because i don't have money to create a large scale sale so you go to a seed stage you raise a amount of money and then you go uh, all out in a particular geography uh, okay i want to launch my product in delhi ncr and i want to make sure that everything works fine in delhi ncr and that i will use this money you hire the talent you hire people you hire people who can work on technology the next stage comes in it's called series a now series a as soon as uh, you cross the seed stage you are a serious company series a means that you have a great potential of company you can really go all uh, out you need at that time you need good quality mentors series a can happen anything between a million to 10 million 20 million depending on the size and then the different series starts normally there are two or three series that happens like uh, series a series b series c series d number of small round that you close uh, number of companies keeps so raising the money and finally the the once this is over series a b c which you call vc stage this is over then comes the pe stage private equity private equity are the players which are looking for which are normally uh, uh, like large banks or a consortium of uh, 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 financial institutions or uh, private equity player like hedge funds and all which put in the money and they feel that this this company has a potential we can do an ipo or we can sell it to a larger equity or we can merge this company into a larger entity so they may have a visibility like pe firms have a visibility that okay your product can be bought over by uh, hellet pickard or hp you know so i'll groom this company to certain level maybe make it a half a billion dollar a billion dollar company then i will set uh, hp and this company and merge with each other or create an ipo you can create another company so there comes the p an ipo is uh, or what we call the offering the share to the public at that time the public part start participating in your business activity public closely you become responsible for the public money so at that time your uh, reporting like you have to do open audits you have to report your uh, financials and all that something so every bit it's a complicated process and uh compliance i would say strongly i will urge the startups who are listening today that kindly focus on your compliance uh number of startups they are so busy in their own product stage or other things they don't focus on the compliance side so focus on the compliance side always be above board don't do anything hanky panky don't do anything don't postpone about the compliance don't say okay i'll do it after a few weeks do it right away because very important because a small blotch on your startup can hamper your funding opportunity in the future and can create you uh, enough troubles so be like whenever you are handling money whether it is seed money or friend and fools money or whether angel money or vc money don't treat that money that money is been gifted to you that money has been given to you and you have to use that money responsibly that is important and demonstrate that uh, because people like i have seen like uh, and there are ample examples people raise the money they will immediately buy good clothes they will go for a holiday they will buy an expensive car i'm not saying that you should not indulge yourself but ask yourself this question am i indulging myself into something which is uh, worthy something is not like there was a uh, company in singapore uh, which the two young people were quite in news i'll not name the company people will know and uh, as soon as they received the money from sukoya was funding it they have all the company officials have gone to south africa for holiday for a week or two certainly when you receive the money next morning you have to start working hard you should not be holidaying uh, that okay i'll i'll receive 100 million dollars but let me spend 1 or 2 million dollars on a party that's not responsibility so be responsible for that a related question dr nikhil sorry this is such an exciting point and such an important point which i also have personally experienced and we are seeing it every day in india that startup founders uh, do not have a great relationship with their vcs and a number of cases are coming up and things like that now this issue of 
the founder vc relationship is a big 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 elephant in the room big big challenge in india on both sides i have seen that not only from the vc side there is certain belief that startup founders once once they get their money into the account then it's like they have arrived the founders have arrived and they start to splurge and all that so there is that belief on the side of the vc now from the side, side of the founder also and their experience that i've spoken to a few founders is that the vcs come with this uh, you know doubt or suspicion that any money that they are going to put in is going to be indulged and going to be splurged so they will create the vcs will create uh, so many conditions and put money in tranches and you know put milestones to every little thing and that really starts to take the startup apart even in the beginning because there is absolutely zero belief on part of the vcs so my question to you sir is that what defines the right founder vc relationship at this stage so it's a onus is also on the vc so uh, see i uh, so uh, because of my role i sit on a men number of vc jury panel and we evaluate the startup we also put in the money we have a government money we have our own iit money we also advise number of investors to put in the money so one thing i always say that evaluate the founding team like i'm again and again using this word during this lecture is about responsibility the the can it be trustworthy can it be responsible can it can it deliver the result uh because see uh vc also is not putting his own money vc is also been backed up by the investors vc a it's the responsibility of vc to take care of their own investors who have given the money to vc to put in the uh, to fund the startup so those things are quite critical uh, so vc role is like uh, uh, like a experienced banker that you go and say okay i want to raise 100 crore for my sugar plant uh, will you give me so the banker should know that the company will actually grow or it will go to nclt you know uh so it's about how do you uh, so your stages should be so strong that you are able to create uh, uh, confidence among yourself and among, among your investment team that this is the founder we really want to work with he is a serious founder and nowadays uh, number of i would say uh, like the founders which are coming up and i really like them a lot people with 10 15 20 years of experience who who have seen things in life recently there is a company which we recently invested i personally have invested some money called navara cellutech now the company founder was 20 years in qualcomm he was already earning multi crore salary uh staying in a gurgaon posh locality he even if he retired for a few years back he would have lived in a comfortable life driving a mercedes and all everything was pretty great but then he decided to jump in into the startup and he is now raising you won't believe a small amount of money 50 lakhs 75 lakhs 1 crore and he is going if you call him today in 3 hours he will be in your office so that that creates a great confidence now we are also going out and helping now helping him we are uh, we are opening up our not only open our opening our wallet we are opening up our uh, linkedin profiles and mobile phones ke hey you should go and meet them here you should go and meet them and we take a uh, on us you know no you should meet this guy he is a great guy and he is really working hard and i am sure this company will do well because see that confidence you have to uh, demonstrate so mature entrepreneurs who are coming in at late stage they have everything to lose it's not about like nothing to lose they have everything to lose because they they have their own reputation so startup founder and i have seen like there was a company which came to and met me and they were in deep trouble but this guy came into the brand new s class suv it was a sony con at that time uh, uh, almost 7 800 million dollar valuation and what i heard recently that they have fired 300 people now why you want to spend 2 and 1/2 crores 3 crore rupees on a car that to noida you are not in dust list you are coming from a class b town there is another founder which recently came and met my brother the company is doing 64 crores i will not name these companies uh, unlike zomato and dipender goel and they are well known flipkart these companies are new companies 
This company is doing 64 crore revenue per year. Extremely profitable, great idea. And they were raising, they have to raise 40 crores now. They come in a, a nine year old car, which is well used. And with t-shirt and jeans and, you know, beard and yes, sir, Nanda Karna hai. This company ko aage badana hai. Now you tell me you want to invest in these kind of people or you want to invest in a flamboyant entrepreneur who is like tossing his keys and showing his mobile phone and speaking in a fluent English. You require, that's a reason like people love Gujaratis. I'm not a Gujarati, but our prime minister certainly is. People love Gujarati because they know so that is what it is. It ultimately takes that your ability to do business and your responsible behavior in holding my money. Absolutely. Absolutely. And your emphasis on the term responsibility is, is so appreciated. I really appreciate it. Now, before we take up audience questions, there are quite a few of them. Uh, one question on the topic uh, related to the topic is about services versus manufacturing. Now, Dr. Nikhil, we see that we have so many, and we hear a lot also about startups that are into services. We know the licious and, uh, I mean, I mean, licious uh, and uh, and Zepto and so many others in logistic services and other services, uh, and they are doing very well. In manufacturing, one reason we don't hear about them is because they are they work behind the scenes. Most most of them are B two B. There are a few that are coming up in EV. That is uh, the most um, talked about uh, sector right now. So we know about them. But beyond that, we know a very few. But I checked on Angel List, for example. Uh, the manufacturing startup space is also teeming and also very vibrant in India. So, Dr. Nikhil, can you tell us a bit about the manufacturing startup ecosystem and man tech, which is a term being talked about a lot these days? <coughs> so, certainly, I agree that you know the starting a manufacturing company is a little bit more cumbersome than the services company. The simple reason is because the capital expenditure is high uh, in manufacturing startup. There are certain companies like Zwork and all, which has become unicorn and doing pretty well. Uh, and there are like backward integration of certain companies which have done like Lenskart. Lenskart makes specs, you know, so they have done the backward integration. They have setting up their own manufacturing facility. They have set up the stores. So from they started as services company, but now they are doing the backward integration. So number of companies are doing that. Services is much easier. Uh, the, the innovation in, uh, in manufacturing is coming. So what number of companies are doing like recently I visited Hero Motors and Hero has this own internal program uh, where they are funding a small amount of money for any ideas which is coming from their own employees. And they are <clears throat> sort of helping them out in and giving space to them in creating their own facility. Similar examples exist in Tata, similar example exist in larger companies because see the cost of manufacturing is high. Recently, uh, Mr. Sanjeev Puri, who is the chairman of uh, uh, ITC, he uh, he came to IIT and we spent uh, three hours together. Uh, and he said that uh, if there is good quality manufacturing startup, agri-tech startup, uh, IT is willing to come and uh, support them. So what happens like not only you require machinery, you also require access to the testing facility. Uh, so that's why the uh, number of organizations, like large organization we need, uh, money wise also we certainly need. So manufacturing companies are the future because, uh, the, if you look at the, the, uh, import today, uh, 99% of the communication equipments that we use in airports is imported. 85% of our medical equipments that we use in hospitals and others are imported. So manufacturing, like because of this restricted policy or the cheaper export, we were not able to manufacture things in India. So even domestic market is fairly strong. And if we have to make something like what we call the self-reliant India or Atmanur Bharat, we have to start focusing on manufacturing. There is manufacturing specific funds which are coming up. There is a support which is coming up from the larger organizations. So if there are companies which are getting into manufacturing, either a product, either a machinery 
or improving a process, they can certainly, uh, MSME has a number of schemes in manufacturing now. So they can check out, go and check out the uh, Minister of uh, Small and Medium, Medium Scale Industry. They can fund up to five crores if you have a design idea or something. So various stages. So there is money now available. Uh, and I think uh, in next uh, two to three years time, you will see many such firms coming up in the manufacturing space. Great, great, great insights. Now I'll take up a few audience questions. You only have about four minutes to go. Uh, uh, now, Rahul, Rahul asks, uh, no, not Rahul. Uh, what is the good way to start up bootstrap or bootstrap or look for investors? According to you, what is the right way? So the first way is, of course, you have to do bootstrap. Even though if you are looking for investors, uh, you have to bootstrap. So uh, bootstrap does not mean that you are putting the money, but even if you are spending money for your car to go from Noida to Gurugaon, you are spending 2000 rupees in your petrol. So that means some investment is going in. So you have to bootstrap. Uh, don't look for investors immediately because most likely and most of the place time, investors don't put the money on a PPT. Uh, they look for a level. Like even if you look at the earlier times when the startup word was not coined, uh, the Steve Jobs and Bill Gates were like so-called the icons of the startup word in 70s or 70s. They started working from their own garage. So that was their place. Like they, whatever the money they can gather from here and there, they started building up the computers. They started working on the software. So they were somewhere. Then the whole world support started supporting them. So you have to start. Uh, just building a PPT is not a company. You know, you have to go out and do something. Then it's uh, the trust comes from the investors. Pratik Natekar from Mumbai asks, uh, how do I know that my idea is worth starting a startup? That's a that's an excellent question. See, Pratik, all ideas are great ideas. Trust me. Now, if you ask me, which is the most breakthrough idea for the next 80 years is replacing Google. Now the question is who will do it? How will you do it? When it will be done? Can you come up with new social media which can replace uh, Instagram or Facebook? Can you? And we have seen that MySpace, Orkut, these were the companies which probably you may not know, but we have used it like 10 years back. Facebook is now taken over by their own sister concern called Instagram. Twitter is reinventing themselves. So even social media space, uh, realignments are happening. So new ideas will come. Uh, uh, every idea is a great idea. What is more important about the execution? How do you execute that idea? However, before starting up, uh, you can discuss among your friends. You find out some people on LinkedIn. You send out their PPT to them. You discuss with them. If you are having an intelligent, serious conversation, most likely people will not say no. If uh, uh, if there is something to learn, something a value coming out of them from them, people will say yes. Okay, this is the idea worth sharing. And if you hear out of ten people, more than the fifty percent of them say yes, then go for it. Akash asks. When can we see India doing as well as Israel when it comes to startups? India is doing much better than startups in terms of sheer numbers. Israel is uh, superior, still superior in terms of two come two start two kind of startup. One is cyber security and defense tech, but uh, in number of like Israel is extremely small country. Uh, they have done exceptionally well, no doubt. Uh, but in sheer number of startups, if you see. We have 150,000 startups registered. We are third largest startup nation. The type of funding that we are having is much higher than the Israeli startups. Last month itself, we have received $1.7 billion in startup funding, which is fairly large. Uh, but yes, in terms of quality startups in defense and cybersecurity, Israel has done well. No doubt, extremely brilliant people, extremely resilient people. Uh, they uh, work hard, super intelligent. And uh, uh, there is, I would again say there's no competition with Israel or Korea or something. Like uh, there is a India-Israel friendship, which is there. India-Korea friendship we have there. So find out a ways that 
you can export your technology to israel and import their ideas back to india so that's how the you will not just have one market you have two markets to look for and work for awesome now with this is the last question we'll be able to take up rahul asks rather says and then asks he says pool and ventilator project are a few of the startups which inspired which come to my success i think he means which come to his mind when success stories uh, are concerned success rate is high at iit k because they are the best engineers the or the ecosystem or the up government favoring startup culture can you tell us about the success mantra you know rahul i love something called pachranga khichdi you know if you put only chawal in a khichdi is not called khichdi if you just put dal it's called dal it is if you put only masala it's called masala everything has to mix together so you have answered your question yourself it's the willingness of the incubator staff to work hard it is a ability of the entrepreneurs it's a support from up government or the central government and it friends like you who recognize us and who uh, see uh, that says making uh, khichdi perfect and uh, and when it serve hot it is extremely tasty also thanks so much dr nikhil ladies and gentlemen i am sharing uh, the link again of dr nikhil's book uh, the startup success master plan do go and buy it read it it's an am amazing treatise on on the world of startups on how to do a startup in india what are the right ideas and everything that dr nikhil spoke about he's put it down in that book dr nikhil this has been an amazing conversation a lot of people including myself have learned so much and i'm going to put these to action uh, we need uh, champions such as yourself to talk about this subject not only in india but at global forums like you're doing already thank you so much dr nikhil have a wonderful day and thank you my last request is that whoever is buying the book please put their review on amazon and also share the book link on social media so more and more people can read it more and people can uh, take benefit of it thank you very much look forward bye 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 sir thank you